This is all most we'll ever see of Rick Hendricks Heritage Center. It's a lot like Fort Knox. We know it exists. We know what's in it. But few have been inside until now. In a word, the building is enormous and exotic cars are lined up next to each other, one just as incredible as the next. If you're a car guy, to go in there and look at cars, you'll be blown away. Rick had been collecting cars all of his life. They were just spread out all over the country. The idea to bring everything under one roof didn't come about until the passing of his son Ricky and his father, Papa Joe. When my son was killed, we had, uh, they restored his trailer and I had all of his cars. And my dad happened to die like 90 days before that and had some of his cars. And I said, I'm just gonna build a heritage center. He did it upright. Inside, Ricky's cars surround his trailer, which houses his fire suit and helmet, along with photos and keepsakes from his career. Not far away is the car his father worked on with a little piece of advice on the back. And of course, there are more Corvettes than you can count. That's 140 some, right at 150 Corvettes. Um, I've got pace cars that won, when Jeff won Daytona, Jimmy won Daytona. 67's are my favorite, so it's the Stingrays with the, you know, the 427's with the, with the hood, the Stinger hoods. He has a 1967 Corvette, once owned by music star Roy Orbison. There's the 1968 Chevy L88, the winningest Corvette race car in history. This 1967 Corvette belonged to King Leopold of Belgium. The car came with a Belgian Medal of Freedom. The King used it as a keychain. And on the corner of Stingray and South Hill, in its own little Corvette garden, sits the first ZR1. I've always had this love affair with those cars. Never thought I'd own one. Uh, it drove me to work and to, to try to make enough money to have one. And let's not forget the Camaros. This is the first 2010 VIN number one, along with a 2012 VIN number 69. Behind these sits one of his world record setting drag boats and Don Perdome's 2009 top fuel dragster. Can you put a favorite tag on any one of those cars in there right now? My 31 Chevrolet has now got a Corvette engine and all in it um, that my dad and I built when I was 14. That would have to be number one. Now it's not the most valuable car to collectors, but to me, um, I'd have to say that 31. It's not just cars. Along the walls are storefronts from places which shaped Rick Hendrick's life. His grandfather's general store, where he worked on his very first car. The Palmer Spring Firehouse is right next to it. He has a replica of the bank his mother worked in and would write him 90-day notes so he could fix cars when he was young. Not far away is the tractor shop where he worked, and there's a scaled-down version of the drag strip he watched his dad race on back in Virginia. And right beside this is a replica of his original dealership, City Chevrolet. On display inside the showroom is Cole Trickle's car from the movie Days of Thunder. Mr. Hendrick even has a recreation of the ice cream parlor where he met his wife. We got a real soft serve machine. My question is, have you become adept enough at making the Q on, the, on top of it? Yes, you, you can make the Q. I can do it perfectly. But the thing that turns the most heads? He's got the drive-in theater with the little things that, that hang on the side of your door so you can hear little speakers that hang on there. That's probably one of the most amazing things he's got. But this is merely the car's part of the equation. Rick also has a man cave, which houses an equally impressive collection of signed guitars. I've got some of them in the floor and glass, and I have, um, I have uh, traveling, traveling Wilburys with uh, Roy Orbison and Tom Petty and George Harrison sign, and uh, I've got a Jimi Hendrix guitar. I've got a, a Rolling Stones did a top 100 guitarist of all, all time, and I think I'm I'm missing one in the top 10. And when he needs to talk things over, he heads to his conference room with one of the most unique tables you've ever seen. I found my first Corvette uh, that I paid a thousand dollars for, and that's my conference table. It's it's restored with a glass top on the the chassis motor and all. His engineers are so good, I'm told if they ran the proper fluids to it, they could actually start the engine. So be careful where you put your legs at the next meeting. But like a true showman, Mr. Hendrick saved his best story for last. The NASCAR had this huge 
uh, duplicate of the Sprint Car Cup trophy. And this thing's about eight foot tall, gorgeous thing. And, and after our, our banquet, I said, what do y'all do with that thing? And they said, well, we store it. And I said, well, I'll store it for you. And you won't have to pay anything. So they shipped it to me and I bolted it to the floor. <laughs> so I said, now you can come see it anytime. It's a time capsule and something I love and it takes me back. Um, and uh, my, my son my, not here anymore, my mom dad's not here, my brother's died in a crash. So I can walk in there and see that my history of my life, my family, all in front of me.